Installing new tile on your floor can dramatically change the look of a room. This overview will give you a good idea of what's involved. These are the materials you'll need to get started. Before you start, ensure the subfloor surface is smooth, flat, dry, clean and solid. Remove any carpet staples or adhesive residue. Check for moisture and smooth out hollows with self-leveling underlayment. If you're replacing a vinyl floor installed prior to 1990, consult a professional beforehand. Next, find the center point of your room by snapping a chunk line in each direction, intersecting in the center, and lay a single half row of tile outward in both directions, using spacers but without motor, to ensure your finished work will be centered. Then, snap a grid of chalk lines on the floor to act as a guide. Next, mix the motor specified to your tile according to the directions on the bag. Motor is caustic, so be sure to wear protection. And you can't use it once it dries out, so don't mix too much at once. Starting in one quadrant at the center point of the room, begin spreading a generous amount of mortar with the flat side of the trowel and press it into the back of board at a 45 degree angle. Then comb through the mortar with the notch side of the trowel. Next, test your mortar by laying a tile flat and twisting slightly. Gently press down in the center and corners. Then lift the tile and check to ensure the back is completely covered. If it's not, ensure you perform the test correctly, used enough mortar, mixed it properly, and that it hadn't begun to dry out. Once you've confirmed you have the right consistency in your mortar, align the first tile with your chalk lines and press firmly. Place two spacers alongside at either end and set your second tile by aligning the edge, hinging it down and slightly twisting it back and forth. As you go, be sure to clean any dirt, dust or mortar with a damp sponge. Every three or four tiles, lay a short 2x4 on top and tap lightly with a rubber mallet to level the tiles and embed them firmly. Finish laying all the full tiles in your first quadrant, being careful to keep the line straight and not tile yourself into a corner. Then finish the other three quadrants and let the mortar harden for 24 hours before walking on the tiles. Now you're ready to cut the tiles to fill the space along the wall. Place two tiles up against the wall to allow for expansion and grout. Then place the tile to be cut directly over the last set tile. Finally, place a marker tile on the top of the tile to be cut so that it touches the upright tiles. Trace the edge of the marker tile to mark the tile below. Place the marked tile on the cutter and align the cutting line with the scoring wheel. Push the cutter along the top of the tile with a single firm stroke. Ensure that the foot of the cutter is fully resting near the edge of the tile and that the scoring wheel is not touching the tile. Then press down on the handle to snap the tile. Once all the tiles are set, wait 24 hours. Remove all your spacers and mix your grout according to the manufacturer's instructions. Holding a rubber grout float at a 45 degree angle, spread grout in sweeping arcs, pressing it into the joints to fill them completely. Remove excess grout by holding the grout float at a 90 degree angle and sweeping diagonally to avoid dipping into the joints. Give the grout a few minutes to start hardening and then wipe the tiles in a circular motion with a barely damp sponge to remove residue. Remove any remaining haze by buffing with a dry cloth. Next, help the grout to cure properly by misting twice a day with water for three days. After 72 hours, apply grout sealer along grout lines, making sure to wipe up any excess within 10 minutes. Finally, cover the grouted expansion gaps along the walls with molding or matching bone nose tile and install any desired thresholds between neighboring floors.